we're going to start with some basic vocabulary to get us into plate tectonics. You see here we've got lithosphere, asthenosphere, subduction, and seafloor spreading. We'll talk about what those things are, and we're also going to have just a general idea of plate tectonics. We'll write that on here as well. Okay, so the lithosphere is the solid layer of the Earth, and plate tectonics is all about what is happening to that solid outer layer of Earth. What is the general, the general idea of plate tectonics? So plate tectonics is just the overall general idea. There's that, that lithosphere, that solid outer layer of the Earth, is made of moving sections. So there's lithospheric plates, or tectonic plates, um, and that those chunks are moving, and because of that we get the kind of things you guys were talking about with the, the spreading, the drifting, the melting, the shaking, all that sort of thing. So with continental lithosphere being land, oceanic lithosphere being seafloor, then knowing that they're thicker and thinner will help you to label these things in diagrams, but also to draw them in diagrams. If you're representing like a side view, profile view of these things, draw your uh, continental stuff thicker, the oceanic, draw it thinner. Um, then when we get into talking about uh, subduction, we'll talk about the uh, significance of being less dense and more dense. Okay, so the asthenosphere is that partially molten squishy layer under the lithosphere, and as you pointed out, Zach, that's what lets the lithosphere move around. Those tectonic plates can shift around because they're on top of that squishy layer. So subduction happens when one plate sinks underneath another. It's headed back towards the mantle. If it makes it all the way through to the, to the mantle, then by that time the lithosphere is usually destroyed. Like it gets completely melted back down and um, recycled back into mantle material. Well, but then we get into that, you know, the mantle is a solid that moves plastically, but it, so it, it mixes into the mantle material and so is recycled. Okay, here's the thing I forgot about uh, to add into subduction. When there is a continental and an oceanic plate coming together, one is less dense, the other is more dense. If these two are coming together and one of them is going to sink underneath, which one would it be? The more dense. Right, exactly, the more dense one. So let's add that here by oceanic lithosphere. This is the one that subducts when these two types of lithosphere meet. If it's two oceanic lithosphere that meet, now well, one of them subducts. But if it's oceanic and continental, it's going to be the oceanic one that subducts. If it's two continental lithosphere that meet, neither one subducts. The crust gets thicker. Um, it can happen where one continental lithospheric plate goes underneath the other, but it doesn't subduct and sink down into the mantle. It's just kind of riding along underneath the other one. And we call that underthrusting. Okay, but so for this, we've got um, the seafloor spreading is the plates separating at what's called an ocean ridge. That would be that like long, long miles long crack in the ocean floor. And as it's uh, pulling apart, as you guys figured out, the magma will rise in and cool and harden to form new lithosphere. So seafloor spreading and subduction kind of go together in that they are opposites of each other. The material is melted back down and recycled through subduction, but the melted material is hardened into new lithospheric plates with seafloor spreading. We'll be using this word bank to label in some stuff on the last column of page two, but we'll be doing that later. So we have three types of plate boundaries. The divergent ones are diverging. Two objects diverging from each other are moving apart. As they move apart, that magma rises, that seafloor spreading business, and lithosphere is produced. Um, the two subtypes for that one, in this case, there's only two subtypes, not the whole three. And we'll talk about that later as to why this is, but the two subtypes here would be OO, and what would that stand for? Yeah, oceanic, oceanic. Or OC for oceanic and Continental. Okay. Um, oh my gosh, why did I do that? That is the wrong thing. I'm sorry, it's not OC. It's CC. Whew, good thing I paid attention. Uh, continental, continental. Then, okay, for the convergent boundary, uh, the lithosphere is destroyed or cycled back down as it's subducted, as plates are 
crashing into each other. And here we get the three subtypes like you would expect. Yeah, okay, if you want to start with C, that's fine. So CC, C plus C, C plus O, O plus O. Continental, continental, continental oceanic or oceanic, oceanic. And as we already saw down here with the uh, transform fault boundary, we have those same three different options. The, any two, I'm sorry, the three different options we could possibly have with two types of plates and the boundaries in between them. So two continentals moving past each other, continental and oceanic lithosphere moving past each other, or two oceanic plates moving past each other where the lithosphere <coughs> is neither uh, created nor destroyed. Okay. Over here, we're going to fill in words with the word banks, but we're going to label diagrams on the next two pages before we get to that. Okay, use the word bank from the first page to try and label the different sections on here. Follow the instructions in each box. Hit pause on the video and then come back to see if you got it right. So let's take a look at this and see if you got the right items labeled. You should have generally been using just a lot of uh, logic to figure out what items are what. So let's start with the one at the top, the uh, oceanic oceanic lithosphere uh, lithospheric con convergent boundary. We've got two oceanic plates coming together and as you look at this diagram here I'm hoping that you can tell with my beautiful artwork that this would be like magma kind of material coming up through here and if we've got magma coming out of a structure that would look like this, it would be a volcano. You had two options for volcanoes, a volcanic island arc or a continental volcanic arc. Well, this is the volcanic island arc because we're talking about islands coming up out of the ocean floor. There's the ocean. There's something popping out of the water. We would call that an island. It happens to be a volcanic, so volcanic island arc. This would be, if from seen from a bird's eye view, it would be a long chain of volcanoes. Like there'd be many volcanoes back behind it and in front of it. Um, in a line. This down here is the ocean trench. That's where the subduction happens and so hopefully you've also highlighted this part in green as the directions say, like highlight the subduction in green. For the next one, we've got a continental plate and an uh, oceanic plate. You were to label which one was which. The most obvious logic here for which one would be oceanic is if you just start with there's the water so this is the ocean so that's the oceanic plate definitely I'm go with that but also take a look at how these two are drawn differently the oceanic plate is much thinner the continental plate is much thicker and we discussed that on the first page then we see the volcanoes are here coming from the continental plate so it would be a continental volcanic arc and these are mountains over here. And on this kind of boundary, folded mountains are formed. Here again is the ocean trench where the subduction is happening. Let's talk for a minute, though, about the subduction and the uh, volcanoes. Notice that the volcanoes form on top of the island, I'm sorry, on top of the plate that did not subduct. That's because the subducted material melts and we get a buildup of magma down here. It's got to push through somewhere, and it ends up pushing through the plate that did not subduct. So that's where we get the volcanoes. And at the convergent, convergent continental, I'm sorry, continental, continental convergent boundary, we get only the folded mountains forming up here. So that's what you should have labeled. Now, there's some disagreement in the scientific community as to what's going on underneath with this. But here's what we've got. The, the way it was first drawn, we have just a bulging of the, uh, of the lithosphere and of the crust. There is evidence, however, that one plate can go, one continental plate could go underneath the other. And in this case, we call that underthrusting. This is not subducting, though, because the plate that goes underneath is still so much lighter than the material underneath it that it doesn't sink down into the mantle. That does not happen, so it's not truly subducting but instead it stays just underneath the other continental lithospheric plate, and we call this underthrusting. Let's check your labeling on the diver divergent uh, plate boundaries. If it's diverging, as we discussed, they'd be moving apart, so your arrows indicating plate motion should all be drawn 
outward. Um, at an oceanic, oceanic divergent boundary, we get an ocean ridge. This is where the seafloor spreading happens, and so you should have the area in the middle there highlighted yellow. In the second diagram, as the continental continental lithosphere is spreading apart, we get a rift valley in between, fault block mountains forming on either side. Areas of magma can occur around in here. I, I'm sorry, this is new information to add in. The areas of magma can occur here as the plates get thinner. So magma sort of seeps up in through the fault lines. We can also get some volcanoes. If there are going to be volcanoes, they'll be forming around in here on top of these uh, fault valleys in between the fault block mountains, possibly in the rift valley. Okay, take a look at this down here. The questions, how does an ocean basin form? Ocean basin, the container where an ocean is, like so the, the ground, um, the bowl for an ocean. This has something to do with divergent boundaries. I'll put some websites in Canvas for you to, to help you. Your answer should include something about a rift valley. So basically, you've got to start here. So what happens to this to form an ocean basin? Then draw three diagrams showing the stages of development of an ocean basin. Label features that seem important to you, particularly anything that would have been a part of our previous diagrams. Here's the biggest hint I'm going to give you. If you start with this, you're going to end up with this in your last diagram. How can we go from here to here, what logically happens in between there to get to this. We'll then discuss these together in class, see what you came up with, and we will also fill in the rest of page two altogether.